Hi there. This is what I look like now. That guy in the, the video with the big mustache is what I looked like a long time ago. I hope you can get past our professional psychedelic production values and take in the serious information on recording and mixing that we're sharing here. It's really applicable for all types of digital audio workstations and whatever software you're mixing in. Meanwhile, my book, The Art of Mixing, is the number one selling book in the field of audio. The Art of Producing is also one of the top selling books in the field of audio. We're also doing classes here at the Institute in San Francisco. We have a certificate program and an associate degree program in audio recording and production. We also offer the same classes online now with live instructors, and that would be me. And we're now doing sound healing and sound therapy classes. We're studying how sound affects you physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. I hope you enjoy the video. This video has been designed to answer that elusive question, what makes a great mix? And how do you go about creating a great mix? You see, the big question is, once you know what all the equipment in the studio does, how do you use it to create a good mix? After you know what the knobs do, which way do you turn them? We'll show you a framework for explaining what a good mix is. Then we will use this framework to see what professional engineers are doing in the songs we like and you like. With such a framework, we can develop our own values for what makes a great mix. This video is not meant to tell you how to mix a song a particular way because a mix is dependent on so many variables. The song and all of its details, the style of music, and the people involved. Instead, this video is designed to give you a structural framework which you can use to categorize all of the different structures of mixing. The structure of a mix. Hmm. What a concept. Finally, someone's mapped out the underlying structure of what you can do in a mix. Wow, did you hear what he said? Yeah. You know, I know what I like but I never know how to get it when I'm in the studio. I had a good mix once, but I can never remember how I did it. Yeah. Check it out, man. I think he's on to something. The players know what's up, though, man. We know what's tight. Why can't we ever get it right in the studio, then? Perspective. Wonderful. Finally, a perspective on everything that goes into recording and mixing. Once you have this visual framework down, you can then begin to build your own perspective on how different songs are mixed. And once you start checking out the details of exactly what other engineers are doing, then you develop your own values as to what you like for each style of music. All values are valid. The only possible evil is having no values at all. We're not here to tell you you should mix things a certain way. We're here to help you develop and remember your own values. And we're here to do it visually, because visuals can help us to remember. What did he say? Uh, I forget. I like it when I can see what's happening. Many people are visually oriented. Wow! <laughs> the colors are great! This is the way learning should be! Is it worth a thousand times? <laughs> In order to be able to explain and show different styles of mixes, 
Let's map out how each piece of equipment affects imaging, the apparent placement of sounds between the speakers. Just about everyone has experienced the perception of sounds in a stereo mix as coming out of one speaker or the other, or somewhere in between the speakers. Now, if we pan a sound all the way over to the right, it's never gonna come further right than the right speaker, right? <laughs> but sometimes, you know, you hear it coming from other places in the room if you've got a really weird room or if the walls are strange. But in a studio, you would never hear it further right of the right speaker. Now, if we pan it to the left, no matter how far you pan it to the left, it will never sound further left of the left speaker. Some people think it's only gonna sound this far left. Some people see it a couple of inches or even a foot further left of the left speaker. So therefore, we can draw boundaries just to the left of the left speaker and just to the right of the right speaker. So panning is mapped out as left to right. When I turn the pan pot here, you can hear the sound pan from left to right and from right to left, like that. Now we're not talking about reality here. Now we're not talking about reality here, because you see, there's actually no sound between the speakers. The reality is, the sound comes out of the speakers in waves, travels through the molecules into the room, hits the walls in the room, and it also hits your ears and your body. This is one way we perceive sound. Another way we perceive sound is we imagine it to be between the speakers. This is called imaging. It's a figment of our imagination. You see, when we hear a sound between the speakers, there's no sound really there. The truth is, the same sound's just coming out of both speakers, and we imagine the sound to be between the speakers. It's just a figment of your imagination, like an audio optical illusion. Also, you know when you hear a sound in the middle of your head when listening to headphones? Well, there's no sound there. Your brain's there. Cool. Even if you are asleep, sounds still hit your body and it affects you. On the other hand, if you aren't paying attention to a mix or if you're off to the side of the speakers, you don't hear imaging. When you're asleep, imaging does not exist. In fact, they've done studies of people who don't hear imaging because of the shape of their ears or because of the shape of their minds. <laughs> imaging is a figment of our imagination. In fact, there is no imaging in the forest. Different people relate to sound in these two ways. Many people just feel the sound and perceive the music that way. Other people actually see the imaging between the speakers. Recording engineers are often obsessed by these dynamics that go on in this imaginary world of imaging. 